and science, I think, go very well together. The art, the community, the environment. There's relationships between all those, and it's that in-between bit is what we're interested in as artists. As an artist, I'm very interested in being part of work that is heading towards environmental change, work that is really about trying to make a difference in our world. A lot of what we do is happening on the water and people just simply don't see it. What art can do is make this work that is invisible otherwise, it can bring it up to the surface and make it visible to a much wider audience. It can inspire people in a more kind of soulful way, if you like. We all know that you, know, you don't change people's opinions or people's behavior by giving them data you know, this kind of looking after your own environment. It's through things that make you feel, that wake something up inside you, and that's what art does. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal of the Aurora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay respects to elders both past and present. I just want to welcome everyone here today for the opening of our Ocean Lovers Festival. It's been two years in the making, a lot of energy, a lot of hard work and a lot of support from a lot of people to get here today. It's amazing that we're able to use this kind of mixture of technology and, you know, building infrastructure. It's been an absolute honour working with Sims over the last couple of years. I really see the work that they are doing in this work with Volvo as well is really developing a blueprint for how we can build a more sustainable and more biodiverse future. Some of you may be wondering what on earth does Volvo have to do with sea walls and the ocean and everything else. When we, uh, we talked about this many months ago, honestly, I couldn't have imagined that it would turn out so well. We need to do more. It's our genuine privilege to be able to support in our small way the work that Peter and his team are doing. So humans, as I think we all here today realize, are having a profound effect on the marine environment, on our oceans. We build extensively into the marine environment. And mostly when we do that, we build biological and ecological deserts. We want to be able to have a positive impact on the marine environment. And so at SIMS, we have a bunch of projects that are aimed at exactly that. How can we stop and even enhance the degradation of particularly our coastal environments? And so these two projects are representations of that theme. The Living Seawalls Project is investigating ways to improve artificial structures such as seawalls. We are showcasing some of our habitat tiles that we have installed in Sydney Harbour. They mimic features of natural shorelines and they have complex habitats. They retain moisture and provide shade for marine life. So we have a lot of different algae species that live on the tiles. There's bivalves such as oysters and mussels, barnacles. We will often see little sea stars and chitons, limpets, all kinds of snails living on the tiles. And at high tide, there's also fish that will forage on the tiles and even some small fish that will live in those microhabitat features. We're really lucky to have the tiles here in icebergs because when they're installed in the harbor, they're on seawalls that are often in very high wave exposed places. So here in icebergs, people can actually swim right over them, look at them really closely, just get to see the features up close. It's great because lots of people don't even know about the problem, don't even realize that all of these artificial structures such as seawalls that are so common in our harbor, they don't know that they cause environmental impacts. So it's really interesting to raise their awareness and not only raise their awareness about the impacts on those, but how using science we can make things better. 
In this part of the world, seaweeds are the main habitat formers. They are like trees underwater, so they form these forests that support a lot of biodiversity and ecosystem functions and services that we humans use. A lot of fish like hiding and living in these crayweed forests. They are the base of the food chain, so they are a big part of tourism and fisheries as well. About 40 years ago, we estimate they disappeared from 70 k's just from the Sydney coastline. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, Sydney was growing a lot and water quality was really, really bad. The conditions are really, really nice now. The water quality here in Sydney is awesome, but these species did not manage to come back. And that's a pretty common problem, not only in marine systems, but also on land. When we degrade systems, in many cases, although you remove the source of degradation, the systems do not recover on their own, so they need a helping hand, and that's when restoration comes into place. So the thing that is really cool about the Ocean Lovers Festival is that it's trying to appeal to anybody that is connected or interested in the ocean. And what we're hoping is that they'll come to this exhibition and realize, hey, there's this beautiful underwater forest that supports hundreds of species, are a really important part of the biodiversity, and we should learn more about them and care about them more so we can protect them. We're trying to involve the community so we promote stewardship. Science often is not very visible and artists can get involved in helping make the work of science, particularly the important environmental restoration work that a lot of scientists like scientists at SIMS are doing. Art can help make their work more visible and therefore broaden the reach of that important scientific work out into the community. People cannot care about something that they don't know, right? So what we're trying to do is to make something visible, something that is under the waves. So unless, you know, you go with a snorkel mass, you'll never know that these things exist. Obviously, children are the future, right? So if we can convey to them the importance of protecting the local marine environment, we're essentially investing into a better future. It is pretty special first to be bringing Crayweed back to Bondi, which is one of our most successful sites, which is awesome. But also, Icebergs is a very special place. I've been coming here for decades, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Kids are always the highlight. So all the kids, when they are interacting and looking and asking questions, that's awesome. That's priceless, right? That's really nice. I think them understanding from really early on what these systems are about, what they provide to us, you know, all the diversity that is in the oceans, how we are damaging the oceans and how we can stop that and conserve what we have, I think it's great because they are the ones that are going to be protecting the oceans in the future. So yeah, it's great to have them on our side early on.